Guys, I'm super excited to have Kristen Collins join me once again. We're actually going to do this as a dual purpose episode. We're actually going to promote this through the podcast. So you all have um, heard from Kristen in the past, and we had an amazing conversation, which has kicked off a tremendously great friendship. And we're going to use this for the pond and for the Ripplers that are in building a community. Because honestly, Kristen, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Everyone needs to be, period, love, period. This is the book, the new book. We are here to talk about it. So first of all, welcome and congratulations, my friend. It is so divine reconnecting with you. Uh, your ripple has rippled me. And it is an honor and pleasure to have a conversation with you uh, oh. to bring out the be love in both of us. I love it. I am I am so grateful that you spent the the time to write this book. I, I think I told you before we started recording, I, I've gone through it twice. You probably can't tell on the camera, but I have dog-eared pages. I got underlines. I got notes. I've I've been utilizing the, you know, these great little portions that you put in there so that you can capture your observations of what you're going through. Let me start with this question. So this is your second book, right? We talked about the first book in the first episode that you were on, but um, how did B period, love period come about? Sure. Uh, I promise you it wasn't a conscious decision. I, I did not incarnate and say, oh, I, someday I hope I torture myself and try to write books. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do it exceptionally well. Let me just tell you, you make it look easy. I'm kind of like, man, I, I am I a slacker. You. It's not, well, at least for me, it's not. So how this came to fruition was after downloading and doing my own healing work through her Phoenix Rising, uh, folks that read it sometimes would reach out and have a lot of questions or want to know what they can do. And I'm like, I don't know what you can do. I barely understand what I did. I'm just sharing stories with you to kind of be sassy and, and you know, spite, spidey. Um, so I realized I was doing a disservice because I left people high and dry. Yeah. So I sat for two and a half years working to distill, to better understand, and then distill what the heck. <laughs> how, hey, I, how, let how me stop you there. When, when you say high and dry, what do you mean? Because that book was phenomenal. You, you felt like there was more to say, or you felt like there was more to explore. What do you mean by high and dry? When uh, what I mean by that is when people would come to me, if they could get, you know, how, how do you connect with, with people uh, on a mass scale? I felt like I was leaving them without a path and I gotcha. did not have a path. Okay. I did not have a path. And it took me seven years of contemplation to get to be loved. So I was inspired. <laughs> I was inspired to try to distill some thinking, some ways of being, some through that experience so that, hey, here's some ideas, here's some thinking. I don't know if it'll work for you. I don't know that you have to do all of this. I don't know if it's in this order, but here's I, I, in reflection what it is that I did. Ah. Uh. I love it. Well, so walk us through the the process. So when you decided that, hey, I I want to put my energies towards this, you sort of implied that this was this was hard for you. It was a challenge. What what specific about the process of writing the second book? What was the challenge for you? It was twofold. First, uh, my experience of writing the first book without really setting out to write a book, it more you know was a journey that happened. Uh, if you do anything a second time, now you have experience <laughs> and some expectation, you know, expectations. So it was a very different experience writing a second book. But with that being said, and I don't know how, you know, everyone operates, but I know how I operate. Um, when I have to sit down and do something and focus and concentrate, uh, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And so it required a level of discipline, of prioritization of maturity, of focus, that um, because now I had a goal. Book one, I did not have a goal. Book two, I had a goal. So that was a very different mindset and an experience in, in, th in that discipline. Gotcha. So what is, um, for someone that maybe didn't read the first book and is looking at this book, what do you hope they get from it? So oh, I love that question. And uh, Be Love is written so that you do not have to read Her Phoenix. Um, I am finding that people are going back and picking up Her Phoenix. Yep. Uh, great. 
But her Phoenix was just a collection of stories to inspire aha moments. It wasn't to tell you what, you know, what to do. And it wasn't literally about my stories. It was for you to connect with your own stories. And, and just own- to clarify her Phoenix rising was your first book for those yeah. that didn't actually see the prior episode. That was the book that you brought out that we originally, that brought us together and, and had the conversation, but it's a phenomenal book for anybody who's watching or listening to the podcast platforms. Be sure you get both books because you are going to, Thank me later. So anyway, continue. (laughs) So with this book, it is definitely meant to be a standalone. And interestingly, because I share um, in my first book, I do share things that I'm surprised I had the courage and capacity to share, but I did. Um, That's not always uh, approachable for all genres. (laughs) So this book is meant to be more literal. Um, so it's more action oriented and it it is written so that a consumer of the content can actualize it in their own journey. I love that. I, I love how you structured this book in the way that you broke everything out into very intentional acronyms and the approach that you took to explain each of these terms, because B period, love period, all of that actually has uh, something that ties to each of those letters. And so the approach that you took to create that and to the content that I found that you is supported by stories, of course, but really some of the folks that I think have inspired you along the way to really connect with that material that really spoke to me being another author, you know, you know, fellow author. I, I love it too. Cause it gives the reader just a little bit of insight as to who you are and sort of where your thinking was and how this formed, but walk us through the, the terminology, if you would, and, you know, maybe where you kind of came up with, I, I'm going to call it a model. I don't know if that's an, a, an accurate depiction of it, but um, I love how you did this in such a creative way. Thank you. And it was divine. You're right. I, I got out of the way of it. So it's Be Love is the book that I wish I got a decade ago. Yep. I, again, this distillation. And then the areas that light you up, you can dive deeper right? Into that work, but it opens the door to the thinking. So I started connecting with be here now, be here now, be in the present and reconnect with the love that's already inside of you. Okay. The gratitude, the health, the abundance that you already have. So as I left corporate America a couple of years ago and started expressing being love, um, and I gave my first national paid speech <laughs> a couple of years ago and to a corporation and it was great and it was super high vibing and the audience got even, you know, it was a very corporate crowd, but they got yeah. here now reconnect to the love that's already inside of you. Again, I felt I was doing a disservice because then they're like, well, how do you do that? Yeah. So I was driving home from that speech. It was a seven hour drive. And I called my beautiful husband, David. And he's like, how was it? I was like, it was good. It was good. <laughs> you loved it. The event planner loved it. It was good. I, it was a double. Yeah. He goes, well, why wasn't it a walk-off? I'm like, well, why? And I go, because they don't know what to do now. <laughs> and I'm not even sure that I know what to do. I wish be love could mean something. Mm-hmm. So the other six and a half hours of the drive home, I'm thinking about what does be love mean? Yeah. And I came to my little office space that I rent and I wrote on my whiteboard this way, B E period L O V E period, and immediately flowed out a pathway of what that could mean. And that is B stands for breathe. How what better way to get present yeah. than to breathe? E stands for experience whatever comes up in that moment experience it period means pause with it pause with it stick with it allow it feel it l in love means exhale it let it go and that became the first half of this cycle of presencing yourself feeling the present moment allowing for it through a pause and releasing it i promise you up until my first 50 years 52 ish i never did that yeah <laughs> I was always getting out of the present moment. And I I then understood why. 
O stands for open your heart. Once you've gotten to the point where you can do those first four things, get out of your head, your ego, your mind, your consciousness, drop into your heart, your beautiful heart. The V stands for cast your vision yep. from that heart, not your head. Vision cast from your heart. E stands for energy. We are all energy. Yeah. That's yeah. it. We are physical manifestation of matter. Understanding the interconnectivity of being an energetic being, being, what is your vibe? What are you experiencing through the other energies in your surroundings? And then the final period stands for prioritize. How are you prioritizing your life, your day, your time, your decisions around being in your own essence and being and connecting with the love already inside of you? I love that. I love that. And it, I I like how in the book you break those down into each individual areas and you really help the reader connect with the, how you broke that down, right? The story, the examples, the approach, but really the encouragement for the reader to actually embrace that. Stop. Look at what this is. How do you experience that? How do you feel that? And Everything from the body scan suggestion, the approach to you know, opening your heart and how you get to, I, I found myself, I was sitting, looking at making notes yesterday in the middle of Starbucks, which was, you know, chaotic and crazy, but I had my headphones and I'm just like, okay, I'm going through one of the activities just because I, you know, I'd done it when I read it the first time, but I wanted to go back through it. And I realized just regardless of how nuts everything was around me and how stressful and crazy my day was how you helped me figure out how to get centered and get focused and i actually was preparing you know for not only this interview but then i was having to uh, move forward and prepare for a meeting that i needed to be across town for and i was just i felt like the book was a gift in that moment and i love the fact that i could just pick up the term right then and there and say, okay, how am I going to apply this? Right. It really does encourage you to, um, to be in that moment and focus on whatever you're reading within the book. And so I, I love that because it, it helped me in a big, big way, sort of overcome some stress and anxiety and just the craziness of the day that was already happening around me. And didn't matter whether that was occurring and, um, all the chaos that was going on, I was able to just like, just enter into my soul for a minute. Um, thanks to Kristen. <laughs> well, Steve, I'd love to react to that as I'm receiving your beautiful words and, and how you ripple, like how you show up energetically ripples out. We are in, you know, the, the history of the world has always had interesting times. Let's yeah. be real. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so it's not, we can't change the vast majority of what we're experiencing. We can't change how we receive it or how we show up in it. Yeah. So this is about change management. I made myself very ill by being very frustrated and very scared and traumatized of all that was around me. I didn't feel safe. Yep. And I have grown into understanding the only thing I can control is how I show up. And if I'm going to be a high vibing ripple, yep. it's not about me controlling and dictating everything around me, that's impossible. I'm going to make myself crazy. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's what do I own? I own me. Yeah. I own knowing me. I own loving me. And if I don't like something about me, I have the capacity and will to change that. Then I can ripple out quietly. Yeah. Right? So it's so in alignment with your work. And how do you be the healthiest you? Yeah. So you can create the most beautiful ripple. I love that. I, I love one of the stories that you share in the book was uh, as a healthcare executive, you you would often, I think you you and I have very similar personality types. Um, and uh, I the story sort of goes where that you were having a meeting, there was you know a, a high tense situation that would have normally sent you off the rails, and your boss looked at you like, oh wait a sec, what's what's wrong here? You know, you're like too calm. <laughs> Is this the calm before the storm or what's going on? So tell us a little bit about that. And, and, and really, it, it seems like at that point you were going through it. You were sort of embracing this new approach. It, you mentioned, you know, your health issues and some of the challenges that you've had in, in other capacities in your life and how that sort of all manifested at one point. But 
I really, I really had to smile when I read that the first time and then reread it because I'm like, I told, I could be right there next to you with that, but I would have been like, oh yeah, I got, I need to follow the example. So tell us the story a little bit. I love, I, that's one of my favorite stories and I'm still very close to my former boss. That's we still awesome. We have the opportunity to work together and it was through my uh, opportunity to work with Scott Cashman that I've learned a lot of this. So we were uh, connecting and in our monthly meeting and there was information being shared with me that historically would set me off and I would be very upset and very vocal yeah. about how ridiculous said situation was. And as he is concisely and doing his best to lovingly share this horrid information with me, I'm just leaning in and I'm listening and I'm breathing, <laughs> I'm experiencing, I'm pausing and I'm letting go. It. And he's waiting for like the bomb to drop and me to explode. And I don't. And I end with, you know, that's super interesting. And, you know, thanks for sharing type thing. And he literally said, are you okay? Like you seem different. And I, I didn't, I, I couldn't articulate exactly, sure. at that time, but in hindsight, and actually I got a text from him yesterday uh, that he still incorporates what we have learned together That's uh, awesome. in his business practice. So I think it's really, really it, it, a, a very high vibing, important time in in the world where we, do, we don't show up reactionary. Yeah. Everything's not about us. And what I attempted to do and be love, and it was year, it was a, it was two and a half years in the making. There was a lot of finite research to give a snippet of science, a snippet of another, uh, an expert in that field to say, hey, listen, <laughs> I am not a metaphysical, you know, engineer, yeah. uh, but cite this information. So it really is an attempt so you could take it off the mat and live it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You, you, you said something in the book that I underlined, I double underlined it. Genuinely feel and express emotions is proven to have positive effects on both mental and physical health. And I think as you and I have learned how we both go out into the world and work with the people that we are lucky to uh, have the opportunity to work with, uh, a lot of people are really um, challenged in this way, right? They don't, It's not normal for them. We haven't been cultured or guided or directed a lot of times. Explain a little bit about why that's so important for someone who's out there that's like, well, you know, this, this, you know, this definitely sounds good. I kind of, I need to do more of this, but there is a pretty massive ripple effect when you actually lean fully into this. And I, I know you've gone through it because you had your own health challenges. Much of that was brought on from, you know, a, a, a kind of a tort of, of events that occurred for you. Um, but holding that in, how your body holds these things, it does impact how you show up in the world, right? Yes. And not only does it impact how you show up in the world, but I think it's also important to understand when I share about expressing and, and experiencing emotions, the old me was very, very, very vocal. So I expressed my emotions very loudly. <laughs> You, I, don't, I, I can't see it. I don't know. It very cute. It was very adorable. <laughs> I'm like, somebody give me a microphone, rent me a billboard. Let's go. Everybody yeah. needs to listen to this because I have something to say. I love it. Wow. Has that changed? Yes. Okay, so experiencing emotions is a surrendering to, a quieting, a contemplation, an observation, a thought. Okay. And then to download it, I, I physically just exhale it, but uh, also the art of journaling it, which was yep. what my first book ended up teaching me. It was an exercise in journaling expression, emotion with no intent of publishing, right? Just getting it out, downloading it, healing. So my heart goes out, especially to you and men who, and women too, but I really, my heart goes out to the men who came out of the womb with expectations of strength and providership yep. and no emotion. And I'm going to get in that. I'm going to build it. I'm going to provide it. I'm, 
you guys are so ripped off where you know you can't express emotion. And so getting yeah, because it's, it's viewed as weakness, right? Amongst right. you know everyone. Well, and female leaders, sometimes yeah. female leaders in corporate corporate are worse than the men because they're overcompensating because they don't yeah. want to be seen as emotional. Yep. So when I share to embrace emotion and express it and, and honor it, it doesn't necess it does not mean that it needs to be a vocal in your face, vomit it at the board table thing. Expressing and feeling your emotions is something that is a, a quieting and something that you can connect with in a Starbucks yep. with your earbuds in with the book, which I did put lines because it was like, oh, I just want to jot down some of the things that are coming through for me right now. Yeah. That's experiencing emotions. I love that. You you touch on a term that I have heard, but I've never really explored. And I like how you phrased it because it really um, gave me some insight, which actually sent me down a rabbit hole um, when I when I read the book the first time epigenetics, right? Some of what we are hardwired to do, um, we don't realize is kind of out of our control, at least how we are. However, how we take it and what we learn from it doesn't mean that that has to be the way that we are point forward. Once we recognize and understand it, we can do things to change it. So talk a little bit about that. So, I, this is a perfect example of dabbling in some information, right? Concisely so that you got lit up by like, wait, what? <laughs> That's interesting. And then you went down around. That is exactly what the attempt was, is to yep. provide fluidity to understand that this is a process and a pathway. I had a huge aha moment. And you know this because you read her Phoenix Rising, yep. where a beautiful friend of mine shared with me because I got in one of the few fights I've ever gotten in and it was a bad fight with my husband and I was devastated. Yeah. And she helped me understand that I was having a different neurological experience than my husband was. And I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. What are you talking about? There's one truth. I know it. He's wrong. And, a story. and you're right. Yeah. Yep. That sent me down a rabbit hole of starting to understand genetic transference of ways of being neurological pathways that we establish in our a genetically be in our developmental years my developmental years are long gone and 90 percent of my behavior is based on neuro pathways that yeah. were created 35 years ago um so genetically we have transference if you don't believe me uh read my book and and cite some information Oprah Winfrey, I, I read that book a couple years ago where she worked with a mm -hmm. child neurologist to talk about genetic transference. There's cultural transference. So here's the great news to sum that up. We are predisposed to our experiences based on factors that we're not even aware of. Yeah. Yet we absolutely have the capacity in a very short period of time to have a different experience if we want to. We can have a different thought. We can create a different neural pathway. We can change our genetic inheritance, our cultural inheritance, our neural pathways in less than a month by creating a new thought, having a new thought, practicing the new thought, and allowing that new neural pathway to replace the old thinking. So for, you know, to sum that up, just to see if I um, follow this correctly and I can, you know, help the audience make the connection, the epigenetics is almost like the blueprint we come pre-programmed with, right? So at the end of the day, that can come, you think that's immediately passed just from your parents, but it could be, like you said, multi-generational. And as I was going down at the rabbit hole of research yesterday, I mean, there is a lot of this that says, you know, you could go back to your great, 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 great grandparents, right? And, you know, depending on where your uh, thought process is, we all come from, you know, one source, right? So there's alterations and changes de depending on the environment, et cetera. But you may have fear of uh, engagement or relationships, or you have a uh, quick to temper. These are things that can be passed down through your DNA and it's part of your programming. But much like, um, you know, uh, a vinyl record, you can change the pattern of that 
play system and you can do things different, which is, I think you are giving a master class in this book about exactly how to do that. Right. And what I love about it is where you just stated, which is that question. I do. Am I happy? Do I want to have that response? Do I want to have a different experience? And if the answer is yes, then by all means, dive in with both feet because you have the ability to do that. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, it and is. I, I marveled at how did I live so long and not know this? What, uh, what, did I skip class that day? Like, what is going on? <laughs> Why are we not all talking about this? Never mind in the health field. Never mind in the genetic transference of health starting with your neurology and your subconscious thinking. So what a beautiful opening for people mm -hmm. to be able to embody and then share, not because they've grabbed a microphone and rented a billboard, but people like the story I share in the book when my boss is like, you're different. What's <laughs> yeah. going on? We welcome the, it's almost like a reverse ripple. Sure. Where Absolutely. people get curious and they come to you and they're like, what's going on? And this is a, I love the word distillation. And Steve, what is hilarious, um, my publisher editor for Be Love, I worked with her in the first book. And so I know her well. And she, I, I, Julie Colvin is my soul sister who helped me heal, who continues to help me heal. Yeah. Um, so I submitted my thinking around this. And she was like, no, that's good. That's good. But it's only 1700 words, 17,000 words. And I'm yeah. like, I, yeah, that's, that's cool. Like what? And she's like, well, it's not enough words. Hmm. And I'm like, well, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Lily and I sat, we paused for nine months because wow. she wasn't comfortable publishing a book. It, she would, it's not, it needs to be more, more words. I wanted to distill it so you could get on an aircraft in Florida and fly to the Northeast or fly to Austin and have a complete journey, not pick it up on your way home a week later and be like, wait, what was this was about? I? Yeah. yeah. A, a two to two and a half hour read that takes you, it's a masterclass. Yeah. And you can pick and choose the lanes you want to go down. So thank you. You get it. You see it. You understand it. And it is an offering of, Here's some ideas. Here's some thinking on a pathway that can help you understand. There's a lot going on for you that yeah. you're not connecting with that you can change if you want. You know, um, you and I come from a similar generation where we had those choose your own adventure books, right? Where you could go in one story and then you could like, oh, let me choose this. And it would would end up with a completely different pathway. And what, what I loved about this when I first got the book in the mail, which I so appreciate you sending and autographing and, and putting such a sweet note in there. So thank you for that. I, I really, really um, thank you. I'm so grateful. Um, but I, when I got it, I tore it open and I stood there and I ended up reading for what, um, I thought was like two minutes and it turned out to be 20 and I was just in the moment. Right. And then what I found was on Monday or Tuesday of this week, I think what, um, uh, I found myself doing was in prepare, in preparing for our conversation today. I went back down, but instead of starting at the beginning and going, okay, where, where, where do I want to kind of start this? I actually just picked the section. And what was great is I jumped from probably three quarters of the book back to like the first quarter of the book and then midway through. And I kept going back because everything that you do in each of the sections, like you said, it's really designed to help you come back. It's, it's not a book that you're going to read cover to cover, and then you're going to put on the shelf. It's literally an opportunity for you to come in and really have this deeper, more emotional conversation with yourself, which I don't think happens nearly enough. And I think it's, um, I think you, the way you captured this is just, it's perfect. And, um, uh, it, it will give the reader, an opportunity to bounce around and really explore the areas because there are some things that clearly we talk about, or you talk about some, some areas that are, are sometimes difficult for people, right? You know, you are encouraging them to go deep and go wide and take the little pin flashlight into the very scary, dark corner to talk through some of the things that you've gone through in your experience. What I found is coming up in my emotion is, um, 
emotions that came up as I read through uh, were some of the challenges that I experienced growing up and some of the um, reprogramming. Thank you, epigenetics, right? You know, to uh, realize that some of my limitations, especially early on in my career, were where I I took uh, a lot of blame and I, th I think had a lot of shame attached to it. I am now giving myself permission to say, you know, that that may not 100% been me and that's okay. But I also have the opportunity to, to, you know, scratch this vinyl record and have it play differently going forward. So how freeing, how freeing, how exciting. Yep. Right? You feel lighter. I mean, honestly, you feel so much lighter. Uh, and then to be transparent, with your beautiful community, um, you release, you realize and release and reprogram and have a different experience here. And suddenly there's the opportunity to look over here. Like this is a journey. Yep. This isn't a, and that's a lesson that I wholeheartedly now embrace where I promise you, I am not the expert. I am the experience. And so it's a continual, it's a continue continuous improvement. Yeah. Continuous improvement. The exciting thing is instead of blaming or holding, right, we can shed that little pen light in and be like, interesting. Is there another way I can receive this? What yep. was the lesson there? It doesn't have to be that way. What would I like it to be? And I, when I, I put a floodlight, I didn't put a pen light on my, my major life trauma <laughs> uh, as a child. It was interesting because then I was space was held for me to rewrite that. Yeah. How would I like that experience to be different? Steve, still to this day, I don't ask for my trauma to be rewritten. I embrace my trauma as a huge chapter in my life that has created the adult I've turned into. Yeah. Right. So when you do stop and shed light, it it can become less of a scary monster that you're sprinting as fast as you can trying to get away from or not deal with. But when you pause and you allow it and you feel it and you release it, that's when you lighten. That's when you find yeah. your joy. That's when you find your freedom to explore all facets of your life. I, I heard something that is really relevant to, I think, what you propose through this book, which is sort of the shedding of the experience and the stories and all of the baggage and garbage you've carried around all these years. And it's, it's an invitation to get rid of it, right. You know, put it at the curb and let some, you know, somebody come and pick it up and take it away. And I, I heard something recently that really um, kept coming up when I was reading the book um, that really made a lot of sense to me. I don't remember what the actual number is. You, you might, because you were in the uh, the healthcare space for a long time. But we we shed our skin a crazy amount. Like the, our skin is really a living, breathing organ, right? And it's um, you have these cells that are are you know ma make up your skin tissue, and we shed that without even realizing or knowing it. Every time we take a shower, every time we scratch our arm, there's there's this continual process. And the body knows to take that over in that process. We don't have to think about it, right? But I heard a thing that said, um, we get stuck in the uh, ho-hum lane of neural pathways that we've allowed our experience and our, uh, our way of life treating us to just happen. And we get stuck in these repeated patterns like the same song over and over again, right? Groundhog Day. And by opening up these topics and having these uh, internal discussions with yourself and being willing to go deep to do some of this work, just the simple fact to ask yourself, are you happy with your life right now? And if not, why not? And where would you like to be if you could change that? Those two simple questions open up all sorts of possibilities. Well, they open up the floodgates in your neural pathway to do things different in the way that you built the exercises in the book, it's like putting that thing into, um, you know, sixth gear. I mean, we are hauling ass now, right? And what I love about it is, as it relates to that, is that is all things that we can rewrite, we can redo, and we can open up new ways to explore 
which when you do it and your brain kind of loves it, your brain ends up wanting to do a hell of a lot more with it. And that opens up all other aspects of your, your life. You, you talk about in one area about the chakras, share a little bit about that, because I think that energy, you know, that we hold it, you know, both negative and positive that, uh, the body holds on to that and that manifests in ways like disease and, you know, stress and all these other aspects, but opening up the floodgates to new neural pathways can be such a huge boost to your, your longevity. Yes. And your, and your chakras. So let's start real quick with the neural pathways and I'll just distill it very uh, succinctly. We Good, have, Cause I could oh, never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I think, that, that's, I think, the gift, right? It's There's genius scientists who know all this, but can't articulate it to a normal human, right? I'm just a normal human who got sick and had to figure out why. Yeah. And I, you know, so now I'm like, hey, check this out. So we're in a society that is bombarding us with information. We have, think about a cave person back in the day who woke up and had like five things they had to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very limited information coming yeah. in, right? I'm hungry. Well, let me go figure that out. Don't get eaten by the saber tooth tiger. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Here we are a long, many, many years later, and we are accosted with information. So here's what our beautiful neural pathways do. Anything that's coming in that is remotely recognizable, remotely recognizable. We file it away without, without assessing it. Yep. We're just like, go, go. Go. We don't look at it. We don't notice it. And we are, we're scouring the field for new information that we don't recognize so we can process that, figure out what to do with it. Is it a saber tooth tiger? Yeah. Is it a blueberry? Is it a shady, safe place to lay my head? Whatever. So these neuro pathways that are established in our subconscious mind are gifting us the opportunity to survive all this information. When we pause and we realize I'm not actually seeing over 90% of reality in any given moment. Can I stop and assess what is going on? Because there's infinite ways to look at this moment. Infinite, infinite ways. I can have a different experience. I just have to pick a new one. Yeah. How exciting is that? Oh, so very. as energetic beings, we do have energy points within our body and they are called chakras. And I am not an expert on this, right? But I do body scans, I connect with my chakras and different chakras can be blocked, clogged, not functioning highly at different times. Each chakra has a, a core representation or a core function. So I do practice where I energy clear as often as possible so I can have free flowing energy and information traveling from my root, right? My foundation, my grounding mm -hmm. all the way through to my higher self, which is connected to your higher self, yep. my love. So it's super healthy. It's super inviting. I made myself chronically ill while I worked in a $4 billion healthcare company. Talk about irony. Yeah. <laughs> you can't make that. You can't talk about destiny. Like yeah. talk about destiny. I made myself chronically ill because I was ruminating. I was in loops of subconscious thinking of, of fight or flight. Yeah. And my autoimmune system blew out as I aged because it couldn't handle it anymore. And in hindsight, I've had every, uh oh, I don't know about every, but I've had more than a dozen autoimmune issues since I came out of the womb that zero clinicians ever in the history of ever looked at me and said, wow, that's super interesting. You also had this. Mm -hmm. You had this. They're all interconnected. They're all autoimmune related. So whether you're getting a knock on the head to pause and reassess like I did through health, whether you're getting a knock on the head in your employment or your job because you think it's your job that's making you miserable. Maybe you're getting a knock on your head in your relationship. You think your mother-in-law is a jerk or you can't stand your spouse. Maybe those are true. Maybe those are true. But I promise you, before you make that decision, if you do this work, my marriage has never been better. Yeah. I love my husband more every day. We are both growing like weeds because I'm not blaming him for my happiness or lack thereof. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, and, and, and you walk the reader through a process of how to clear those chakras, which I love, right? And you do it in such a simple way. I've, I, you know, I've obviously done a whole lot of exploration in this space um, and 
uh, it blows me away as to how complicated people make it. Right. And so I really personally, as, as a dumb guy, I really appreciate you well, <laughs> You're making it simple. You know we give away our power. This is super, super high vibing and important. Yeah. So thank you for inspiring this. We give away our power. When I read that book, when I take that course, when I go to that retreat, when I get the new job, when I get the new spouse, we give away our power. Yep. With us turning within and connecting with self and loving our divine, unique, special, perfect, imperfect human that we are, and we go within, we free up all of that. Yep. And it's, it's not rocket science, and we don't need to go out there to get it. We need to go in here to love it and connect yeah. with it. I love that. Well, and, and, you know, what you just shared about your marriage and, and your relationship with your husband, I mean, that's, that's proof positive right there, right? You know, everybody wants that, and, you know, whether it's a better relationship with your spouse or your significant other, your kids, your coworkers, your friends, your, you know, extended family, just your community. And much of that is within your direct control if you are, willing to put in the time and the effort to get yourself right with it first. Right. And, and I think leave early, I yep. promise you, you're going to attract the same lesson, yep. a different mask. And so this pausing, um, and I'm constantly transitioning and I'll have people say to me, well, why aren't you? And don't you? And I'm like, listen, I have enough life experience now. <laughs> <laughs> to know that when it's time for me to go, I will go. Yep. Okay. But if I go early, if I'm not complete, if I don't sit in the discomfort, and that's the thing, Steve, we are so immediate gratification. Yeah. You've got to get out of discomfort. No, you don't. Yep. You got to sit in it and experience it and ponder it and welcome yeah. it. And say, Thank you for visiting. And then it takes away the power of the discomfort. Yeah. I, I love that you said that because that's something that I've really had to practice to get better at. And part of what our theme last month for the pond was, was setting boundaries and getting good at and comfortable about saying no. Right. And what I found is that the more conversations I had with our Ripplers about how hard that is, you know, the more that we always arrived or we ended up arriving at a conversation where almost every single person was they're trying to not let somebody else down. And I said, but what about yourself? Right. At the yourself. end of the day, you've got you, you are trying to adhere to someone else's schedule or you're on somebody else's time clock or you're on somebody else's, you know, uh, level of expectation. But where is yours? And I think the vast majority of us, especially in, in the world right now, we don't remember that, hey, look, we can't be the best version of ourselves unless we put the effort towards finding what that best version is. And I think that's just so critical. And I think that, you know, both your books really illuminate the need to do that. And I, I just think it's, it's so powerful. And I think, as you said, right, you have to do that so that you can experience a completely new level of awareness, <laughs> happiness, and love towards yourself and others. I, I, I love where this has taken us because no is a complete sentence. <laughs> and no is unapologetic and no delivered from a place of love. Yep. You're doing other a disservice by saying yes when it should be a no, a disservice. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how many times I have delivered a no from a place of love. And maybe sometimes that other that situation grew in a way that it would have never grown with me. But also what happens a lot is it comes back, it comes back a little differently or with some maturation or I've matured or now there's new information or situations. And then it turns into a yes, that's delicious yeah, fabulous. So no is a complete sentence that is very healthy when it's coming from a deep place of love for self yeah. and others and respect. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I could talk to you all day. I, I know, love, like, I awesome. love, love our conversations. And I'm glad we actually got this on, you know, on video and, and, you know, we'll, we'll put it out into the world, but um, I'm grateful you didn't say no to me reaching out way back when, you know, when I, I, you know, visited with you about the possibility of getting you on the podcast and 
I'm grateful that we both said yes to the friendship because you have brought something to my life that is really, really valuable to me. And you have brought into the world this amazing, amazing book. So that, you know, again, guys, go look for this B period, love period. You can find this on Amazon, uh, kristencollins.com. You know, how do you want people to uh, reach out to you or connect with you in out there in, in uh, I, I was about to say the internets, right? Oh my gosh, date myself. But how, how do you want people to follow your work? Because you have some great stuff that you're putting out there, including, you know, you've got speaking gigs and opportunities for people to get exposure to these ideas uh, live and in person. So, you know, Share how you would like folks to show up and, and get to know this work, um, you know, beyond just the book. Thank you. And to be honest, any, any way that works best for them. And that's what I love about this. So you, you know, you and I met through LinkedIn. Yep. And so there's one portal. But what I want to share about this is energy and saying yes and saying no. Um, no is 95% of the time the word that it has to be for me. Sure. Right? I have to set those boundaries. I have to self-care. I've got responsibilities. I want balance. You did reach out through LinkedIn and I, I, I paused and I received your energy and there wasn't like this big, heavy, it was yes. And you're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. But why I'm sharing that with, with all the Ripplers and, and, and through our, both of our networks is it was a hell yes from my my core, from all my yep. chakras, right? So saying yes to things because you, your body tells you that because you're present to yep. it um, is vital. It's important. And it, that's how I get my yeses. Love so it. that was important. And so thanks for reaching out. And thanks, thanks for your friendship and your, your love and light. Um, I don't project how people should do their work through me. I don't project it. I invite through the channels, through the offerings. And if something lights you up, you have something to say, you want to touch in, reach out in whatever format works. If you don't, <laughs> you know, that's, that's <laughs> fine too. I think my ask is for folks to, to, to exhale into it, to surrender into it. Um, Not worry about what everybody else is doing. I was going to ask, share the message, share the book. But I also am like, yeah, don't share the book. Be the book. Oh, I love that. Well, be the book, then share the book because that, you know, that this book needs to get in the hands of everyone. I was visiting my meeting yesterday after I left Starbucks was with uh, some guys that are really struggling in their technical careers. They, you know, they're in a leadership role and position, but they really are having a hard time. And I, I pulled out the book and I showed them, I said, you've got to go get a copy of this. And of course they were like, Oh, that, I don't know. You know? And so part of the problem that you have is that as leaders, you're not living these principles, right? And it is really essential. And this comes from someone that was in an executive level leadership role and position, had to lean into it. Clearly, I know why you were successful in your career, but I think you you had a higher calling and a higher purpose. And I think both of them do as well, but they need to start somewhere. And so we had a really honest conversation about what that was and why it was important. Um, and I, I encourage everybody that is going to see the video or, you know, you know, catch this in the pond or on the podcast platforms to do the same thing. But, you know, the, the underlying principle here that Kristen is telling us is we got to do the work and you have to show up for yourself before you can really show up for other people. And so you have to be love and you've got to find what that means for you. And she gives you the prescriptive methodology, you but you have to show up and do the work. And so I'm super, super grateful for your amazing work and in in your brilliance that you've put out there into the world. And and I'm just yeah, you know, just want to thank you so much for doing it. I, I receive that. I appreciate you. Uh it's funny because it's not a sex, you know. Can you imagine an executive man walking through the airport with this, you know, under his arm? I get, I get that. It was just like, I was told, don't call it this. I yeah. was told don't do that for marketing purposes. Uh, this afternoon, I'm giving an international speech to a bunch of uh, company owners that are very high vibing and it's called work-life balance, but they're going to receive be love. 
I and, love it. You no, know, and and not, it won't be for everybody, but it is it is for some. Again, why it's don't vomit it, just be it, and then you will ripple in. You will ripple in the opportunities to spread love by your own authenticity and from your own depth and surrender. Well, I think you'll be surprised. I know you, and I know the power of you speaking. Uh, that they, they're all going to, they all need the message, you know. And my hope is that you're going to have way more than you think that will actually lean into it and actually embrace it. Because I think we need to make this cool for uh, for men to walk around, uh, you know, sit in Starbucks reading a book like this. I mean, I will tell you, I did have a woman walk up and like, "What is that book?" And I told her, and I said, "Oh, this is a good friend of mine." and um, but you could see the look of like, that's, that's odd, right? Well, you are amazing. It's I a conversation it. starter for sure. Right. <laughs> so if nothing else, people are looking for ways to connect out there in the world. Uh, bring this book. Kristen oh. Collins will open up the door for conversation for you for sure. Yeah. But not just with yourself, but with other people as well. It's, it's when it's they're amazing. ready. Yeah, absolutely. Ready. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And, you know, I, if there's anything I can do to help you get the word out even further, promote this. I would love to find some avenues for us to do some work together on, you know, uh, clearly this work really, really resonates with me. We need to find uh, some ways to keep the ripple going. So you know, if you come up with ideas, let me know. Back at you. If ripplers have any ideas on how I, what well, just came through when you shared that, I was like, well, I'll, I'll meet you in Austin. Right. Yeah. Let's hold space for a gathering. But I welcome, okay. right. And, or if your community is like, hey, can you guys come here and hold space with my community? Uh, I would love to partner with you on that because oh, yeah. you, you embody you embody the work. Uh, well, thank you for that. I'm, I'm honored by that. And I appreciate that more than you could possibly know. So yes, if anybody's catching this and they, they have some doors of opportunity to open to it, we are open to it. So we would love that. So you guys take care and uh, Kristen ripple on. Thank you.